Live from Radio Row in Las Vegas, Nevada. Super Bowl week, baby. 49ers and Chiefs rematch. Some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment will be right here. Presented by Roan Apparel. It's the Jay Jasmine Show. Back here at Radio Row in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. As always, we are indeed presented by Roan Apparel. Come on, people. Roan, R-H-O-N-E.com. Promo code ASBIN. And you'll get 20% off. Joining me right now is one of my favorite college football analysts. I feel like in the last year or so, he's really blown up if you're on social media. Penn State alum, UMass yeah. alum, Adam Brenneman. What's up, Adam? Appreciate having me on, man. I got to tell you, I love Roan, too. I, I love their shirts. I, I, I rock them all the time. Well, so promo it's, a good, it's a good sponsor. Hey, it's a good go. sponsor. You got, you got a discount for me? Uh, discount code? 20%. Okay. Promo code as, man. Right. I mean, I got you. All right. Yeah, I, I need that. I need that bad. I love <laughs> it. So uh, let me start with, like, a, a couple of college football questions. Yeah. And then I, I have a bone to pick with you oh. about a former teammate of yours, okay. right? Christian Hackenberg. As a Jet fan, you, I think yeah. you understand where I'm coming from. But. When you look at kind of where college football is at right now, I mean, three of the four coaches that were coaching yeah. in the playoffs are no longer with their current team anymore. Oh. Is that good or bad for the sport? What do you make of what's kind of transpired with college football the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing the trend all over college football now of one, of one coaches retiring, coaches moving from the college to the NFL because of the craziness of college football right now. I mean, you have uh, – the combination of NIL in the transfer portal, which has changed the game completely. It's tough for coaches. Uh, the coach's calendar is brutal. I mean, these coaches are recruiting, doing signing day, NIL portal, all while coaching in bowl games. Uh, they're, they're not seeing their families. It's a, it's a, a crazy time in college football. At the same time, I feel like college football is, you know, at, very close to being the best that the sport's ever been. You know, we're close to kind of figuring out how to actually pay the players, which has been a long time coming. It's a little chaotic right now, but we'll get to a point of revenue sharing. And uh, and I think we're on, we're on kind of like the dawn of the greatest era of college football that, that, that we've ever seen. I mean, put yourself in like the current player's shoes. It wasn't yeah. that long ago that you probably could have been making some money in an I NIL deal. I mean, <laughs> I, I just I, you talk to guys that are going yeah. through it. You talk to coaches. Just take us inside. How crazy is it with trying to basically – not only recruit players to join you every year, but recruit your own players just no to doubt. Stay. Yeah, I mean, you're recruiting your own roster first and foremost is every time the season ends now, you know, you have to first, before you go look at who's out there to get, you got to say, how do we keep our best players here? Because you know that every big time school is going to call your best players agent or high school coach and get in contact and say, What's he making at school? Why? And if he's if he's making two hundred grand, we'll pay him three hundred grand to come to our school. Uh, so that's the first step for coaches and and for a lot of these coaches, keeping a great player at your school is a bigger win than getting a big time transfer because you know what you got with the guy at your program. He's been in your system. He knows the culture. So that's a big win. And that's the focus. Number one. Then number two is you, you got to acquire the best talent in the country. And the way you do that nowadays is through NIL deals. And that, that's just the nature of the game. And I think no coach loves it. Uh, it's chaotic. The combination of the portal and NIL is what the issue is. NIL by itself is great. The portal by itself is great. Co together is where it, where it becomes uh, inducements and pay for play and guys are getting paid to transfer uh, is where the issue is. But the coaches that are the best in college football, they have to embrace it. They, and you look at guys that have. Lane Kiffin has dominated the transfer portal. I guarantee you he doesn't like it. But he's dominated it and he's embraced it. And we're seeing the programs that haven't embraced it. Uh, look at Clemson. Hasn't embraced NIL in the portal and hasn't been very good lately. I think that changes soon because Dabo's now starting to embrace it. But uh, it's the it, it's the age of college football we're in. And you either are going to do it or you're going to not win many games. I mean, what could be done to kind of regulate it? I, I'm all about athletes getting yeah. paid. I, like I've talked about this forever. I think if, you know, Johnny Manziel – is the most popular athlete in the country, and yeah. he's not making any money off you know number two jerseys being sold in College Station. I I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. But I also think it's ridiculous. It's like, well, here's a guy coming into one school. Oh, we got 300k from the transfer a year later. I think yeah. just that is absurd as well. Where's that? Where's yeah. that happy medium? The the, the first solution that's going to happen soon is revenue sharing for the from the TV deals with the athletes. So uh, there will be base salaries for the athletes from these TV deals. Uh, that's the first step. To, to get all the athletes paid, to get them guaranteed money, uh, that's going to happen at some point. Everyone in college football, the higher, uh, the executives, everyone kind of agrees that that's going to happen here at some point. Um, the, the number two is some kind of salary cap has to be put on the different, uh, the different, the, the programs in college football. You know, one of the issues right now is FBS football has a group of five teams like a like a UMass where I played or a UAB or uh, any of these G5 schools competing for the same championship 
that Alabama competes competes for. Ohio State spends thirteen and a half million dollars a year in NIL money on their Same. roster. UAB spends five hundred grand. Okay, and they're competing for the same championship. So that is flawed in itself. So there's a couple of things. One, group of five should either break off or should have its own championship. So UAB and UMass and all these other UConn should not be playing for the same championship that the Power Fives play for. Um, and then salary caps. So there should be a cap on how much money each school can spend on their roster. Uh, and that comes from revenue sharing. That comes from uh, someone finally taking a stance in college football. I could talk about issues forever for college football. The NCAA failed here, right? They failed with any regulation, allowed this to come to be without any any uh, any plan for how it's going to take take place. College football needs a commissioner that will be in charge of the sport. Right now, the people in charge are the conference commissioners. Okay, so Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, commissioner, is probably the most powerful man in college football. But Greg Sankey is also in charge of women's basketball and men's basketball and lacrosse and hockey and he's in charge of all of it there's no one that is just focused on college football so we need a leader like like a guy like the nfl commissioner has one every other sport has one we need a leader that's in charge of college football that can fix these issues head on who's the guy is there i mean could it be you adam could adam brennan be yes the i am of making football? my case to be the commissioner of college football <laughs> um yeah no i mean i think i think there's a nick saban I guess I just saw he's going to game day, but yeah. but I mean, it, there do, there needs to be someone. When you think about it, like, how is there not one person? Like, tell me who's in charge of college football. You don't, no one knows. You're right. I mean, it, it is just the, the school presidents, guess, the yeah. commissioners, the, the conferences. The NCAA is a joke, so they're not in charge. So they're not in charge. Yeah. I mean, what are they gonna like? NCAA goes and investigates Tennessee, and Tennessee laughs at them. Like, nice try. We're not like, what power do they have? You know. You're right. It, it's as a. I grew up in New York, but I did radio in Houston for five mm -hmm. years. So I'm around A&M fans. I'm around LSU fans, yeah. Texas. Like I, I, I like college football, but I have a hard time because I don't have a school affiliation. You know, I went yeah. to a D3 school with Ithaca College. I have a hard time as like a casual college football fan, but a diehard sports fan, yeah. really just like loving it because it just, I don't know, it just feels very unbalanced. It feels very one-sided. Yeah. Kind of some of the issues we were talking about. I, I do think some of these issues you bring up can be rectified and would make it yeah. a better sport, but I just don't have a whole lot of confidence with the amount of schools yeah, we're talking about being able to kind of legislate it. You also think about it though. And, and to be realistic, we all talk about the negative parts of it, but college football is in a good place, yeah. man. I mean, it's never been a better product. Do you like the 12 team playoff? I love it. I mean, 12 team playoff is coming. Uh, college football viewerships at an all time high. I mean, college football, like, a regular season college football game gets better TV ratings than the NBA Finals. I mean, it's like college football has never been in a better spot, but it's chaotic and coaches don't love it. Uh, there's a lot of issues that are that are going on. But you think of all the all the things we're talking about, NI on the portal, like by themselves, they're all great things. I mean, the transfer portal. Think about some of these guys that have gotten. Think about a kid like Will Levis, who was at Penn State, couldn't get a couldn't play, transfers to Kentucky, takes off in his career, becomes a becomes a top NFL draft pick. Think about all these guys who've gone through adversity in their career and have come out on the other side because of the portal. Think about NIL deals where guys who may not, not may not play a lot in the NFL make 20, 30, 40 grand in college. They now have 20 grand in saving to start the rest of their life when they're 22 years old. That changes people's lives. So it's, it's all good. It's just the combination together and the no regulation and no one in charge is what makes it chaotic and, and, a, and an issue. You talk to college people all the time. What's the craziest NIL story that you've heard? <laughs> Someone just asked me that. Um, the craziest NIL story, um, you know, I, I just think I, I won't say the guy's name, but I got a call recently from a power five quarterback at a big time program um, starter and play, had a great season. And he called me and he said, hey, I'm going to transfer. And I'm like, why would you transfer? Like, you're the starter at school at this school. You're the man. You're probably going to play in the NFL. Like, why would you leave? And he said, if I transfer, I'm worth more money in the transfer portal and NIL. My, my value goes up because now the bidding war starts and everyone's going to outbid each other. And I may be making 500 grand at my current school in NIL. I'll go make 2 million in the portal. And I don't know how long I'll play in the NFL. So I need to maximize my earnings $2 right now. $2 million dollars for a college quarterback. Oh, yeah. I mean, at, at a maybe a million and a half, 2 million for a oh big God. time college quarterback a year. So that was eye opening to me where this, this kid who's a big time player will play in the NFL said, if I transfer, I'm worth more money. And, uh, and that's what we're seeing. And then as a coach at the, at the school that he left, I mean, what's the coach going to say? Okay, like, yeah, we love you to stay, but we're going to tell the kid not to go get one and a half, two million bucks. That's the problem, though, I have with like college football. Like that yeah. example right there is not how. No, it's, I, I'm it's an about, issue. I'm all about the players being paid, but like, yeah. there's that fine line of like, well, no if this guy's really good, he's successful at a school, and he's only leaving because he has a chance yeah. to make two million dollars. Like that is a flaw in the college yeah. football. And, and right the hard there. part too is for a group of five schools too. Like, 
you get you get a kid at a at a school in the Sun Belt that plays really well. I mean, you just know he's leaving, right? right? And as a coach, I, you know, I, I called a bunch of uh, MAC games for Mid American Conference and um, talked to some of those coaches, and they had some of their best players. And I would ask them about him, and they just said they would make comments like, "We know he probably won't be here next year because he's that good. He's a Power Five type of player. We're going to lose him to the portal, and we can't even blame him. Like, go, 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 get your bag. Go, go make some money." All right, you know? here's here's my issue with you. You ready yeah. for this? You were on my buddy Jack Settlement's podcast. You were talking about you know quarterbacks and how hard that position is. I forget mm-hmm. the exact conversation and you brought up Christian Hackenberg and you're like, yeah, you know, look at all these quarterbacks that go to the Jets. You know, none of them work at none of them work <laughs> out. And I want to make something very clear. Zach Wilson's terrible. He wouldn't work out wherever he goes. Uh-huh. Love Sam Darnold. They failed him with Adam Gase, but he's proven to be a backup in the league. Yep. Mark Sanchez walked into the best possible situation ever. Best O line in the league. Yeah. Number one defense in the league. Number one running game. They went to back to back championship games. Oh, all of a sudden Mark Sanchez his yeah. play diminished after the team around him got worse. Christian Hackenberg was a second round pick and he yeah. never took a professional snap anywhere. So you blame the Jets for Hackenberg. That is not fair. They, the Jets didn't ruin Christian Hackenberg. If he was so great, why didn't he uh, play a single professional snap in the NFL? How, how long, You've been holding on to that one for a while because that settlement podcast was a long time ago. It's that my was, first time meeting <laughs> him. I'm like, I'm a fan of this guy, but I'm a hypocrite if I don't bring this You've been thinking him. about that for a while. Oh, 100%. Here, here's what I'll say. I think Christian's a good buddy of mine. Been on my show. We talked about this a bunch. I think Christian will admit that he did not uh, perform at a super high level and didn't take care of business like he should. At the same time, the Jets are not a great organization to go to as a quarterback out of college. I think Christian needed some development. I mean, he was 20 years old when he got drafted. So he needed some development. And let's be honest, the Jets aren't the best program no. to develop a quarterback. Um, at the same time, I don't think he... I don't think he got a ton of help from other leaders in the room or in the organization. Uh, also, I, I do think there's something to be said that being a second round pick as a quarterback is kind of is you're kind of in no man's land as a second round pick because they haven't invested in you enough as a first like a first round pick where you get you get drafted in the first round at quarterback. It's like we got to make it work with yeah. this guy. You know, like Zach Will, like we we got to give him a chance and a chance and a chance because we just spent all this signing bonus money on him guaranteed. Second round is you're not making enough money. Where, um, where like they invested a ton in you, so it's easy to move on. Um, and at the same time, it's like everyone you have, you have the expectation of performing like a first rounder. Christian Ackenberg was expected to perform like a first rounder, but they didn't buy into him like they had invested in him as a first rounder. So it is a tough spot. I talked to Deshaun Kaiser about this too, who played at Notre Dame and was a second round pick. Uh, it's really kind of a no man's land place to be as a quarterback because you're kind of not all in, but you're not out, and then they right. haven't paid you a ton yet. Um, but at the end of the day. Man, as an athlete, you got to go make it happen. So I think Christian would, uh, would you know, would like to have things back in his career. But I also don't think he got the best opportunity that he could have gotten. Well, he, here's the one thing I'll say for him: he wasn't supposed to go in the second round. No like, doubt. it was a huge shock that he went there. Mm-hmm. If he was, you know, Bryce Petty in the fourth round, who yeah. cares if it doesn't work out? No you know, he took a dart throw; it didn't work. I just, I, I just thought it was funny. He's like, you're lumping all these quarterbacks yeah. that are bad. And you're like, Christian, <laughs> the Jets fell Throw, my, throw my like, guy in there. I'm like, believe me, I, I, I will. I'm a diehard Jet fan. I yeah. will criticize the hell out of the Jets because they have been a, a, a disaster yeah. for the last, you know, 13 years without the playoffs. The only reason why Christian Hackenberg didn't work out is because they had a GM who took him way too high, and it turned uh, out he never should have been drafted in the second round in yeah, the first place. No, hundred percent. I mean, I think, I think, uh, you know, Hack left school for three years, you know, and he went through some some shit at Penn State. Now, I mean, the sanctions and and coordinator changes. And I covered Bill O'Brien in Houston, and I I'd argue that it, it like Hackenberg's freshman year, I think it was, yeah, maybe the best coaching job Bill ever did no in his NFL life and college life. No doubt. I mean, Bill O'Brien did a phenomenal job with Hackenberg, and you know, we also had Allen Robinson on yeah. that team who was making big plays when he he was balling out. So, um, yeah, Hack's a, Hack's one of the best. Uh, natural throwers of the football I've ever seen. The way the ball comes out of his hand, uh, it's a shame he didn't he didn't uh, you know get to play some more in the NFL. So w- what's going on with you? Obviously you're you're covering college yeah. football. I know you're calling some games. What's the next step in the life of Adam Rodman? Yeah, I mean, man, I'm I'm focused on the content first of all. You know, I'm put, we're putting out twenty some pieces of the content a day on I social see you're media. Mic'd now. Up. We got the team. Oh yeah, we're we're filming yet. everything, man. It. We, we constantly it. film it all. So then like we'll go back and chop it up and get good clips from this. We'll tag you and use it all for content. Um so we're posting a ton. Have my podcast next up with Adam Brenneman where I interview uh coaches and athletes and then you know the call games on TV. I'm really enjoying the TV side of it. It's fun. Uh get to stay close to the game. There, there's nothing that's the closest feeling you get live television sure. to actually playing the game. So it's been cool and it keeps you around the game and going to games and watching film. So it's been really fun, man. The media career has been awesome. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, just, uh, just kind of getting started. So it's been good. Thanks for doing this. Really yeah. Appreciate it. Man. Thanks so much. He's awesome. Adam Brown. My name is Jake Asman. Quick break. And we're back with more live from Vegas here. It's the Jake Asman show at Radio Row. <laughs> 